SanDisk going for a new system, possibly a new standard. Another company enters into the Sea of Express space. Instagram going through a bunch of changes, better or worse, I don't know. Let's talk about it either way. Let's rewind. It's been a minute. Come hang out. What's going on everyone? Seth Miranda here. This is Adorama Rewind. I know it's been a while. I've been out on the road, went to NAB, which covered a lot of stuff. So if you have been fiending for some gear news, you go check that out. It's right there on the channel. Me and Fernando went over to NAB and uh, you can check out the what's in my camera bag uh, that we throw on that playlist, but really day one, two, three, and four, you've got a pretty well-stocked amount of stuff going on there from Angelbird, Anton Bauer, Satchelor, Aperture, Canon, Blackmagic, Nanlite, SanDisk, Sennheiser, Atomos, Audio de Design Desk, and more. Uh, there was a lot going on at NAB. It was really refreshing to go to uh, that show and see everybody we haven't seen in a while. So if you want to catch up on all the new product stuff, go check out the NAB playlist. I will put the link down below and uh, go check out Fernando's video so that he gets psyched to do more of them. Hey, leave him a good comment, all right? Tell him I sent you. Anyway, let's jump right into this with something that came out and uh, we were actually clued into at NAB and we weren't allowed to talk about it till after NAB. So that's when our video dropped on it. But SanDisk is introducing the ProBlade SSD modular system. So uh, this is really, there's a bit to explain and I, our video was out there and we, I saw all the comments that took place on it, but we got a chance to talk to them directly and really get some insight on what they're thinking about with it and what's going on with it. But what exactly is this system? So what what you're looking at is basically a mag and an enclosure system for NVMe M.2 SSD drives. What is all that? If you're not familiar, M.2 drives, NVMe, are the solid state drives that are basically in your computers these days. Everything's been switching over to them. Uh, your MacBook, uh, even this PC that I have built right here has three of them in there. And it's pretty much a really great system that we've all moved into. There's no moving parts. It's fast, it was like super, super fast compared to spending hard drives. But one of the things that's been going on there is the workflow has been a little weird with all the different card formats, the different USB ports and all these other things and just having mass data that we're creating. So before I go into all this, I just wanna say I saw your comments on our video and I saw a lot of negativity about this and I think a lot of it was misguided. So I'm gonna try very rationally to explain why I think this is a very good way to go about things and hopefully it gets adopted and why I hope it gets adopted. So right now we are stepping into a lot of data creation, right? We've been creating a lot of data. I mean, we're all creating on our phones all the time and phones are 4K video. Well, what about, I don't know, 8K 12 bit 60 frames per second raw video? Yeah, so we're creating more and more data, right? And more and more easily, and we're having to find a way to actually physically transport it. Now, they're basically, their whole thing on this is more towards the idea of you can walk around with a wallet full of massive amounts of terabytes of data just in a few blades, which is pretty great in its own. But because it's modular, because this right here, this mag is basically like, a version of a memory card if you think about it, except instead of you going from a memory card to from your camera into a reader and then to an SSD, what I'm saying is what happens if this ProBlade system becomes standardized to, let's say a Dell laptop comes out with a ProBlade slot on it, just like MacBooks had an SD card slot on it, they went away with that and then they brought it back for the newer MacBooks because of the demand. Well, what happens if we have cinema cameras that have just a straight Pro Blade slot to use an NVMe drive, one of your choice, because you can actually, it's not proprietary, despite what a lot of you are saying. They said in our video, it's not proprietary. This can be mass adopted. So you go from your camera into the computer and that's how it goes. Instead of it going, well, let me read it from the camera itself. Let me find a reader itself or this external SSD that we've been doing with a USB-C cable to, to some kind of rig holding the SSD on the outside. Who's to say that in a couple years, the next camera bodies don't take this into account? Here's why I'm saying this. And a lot of you have actually been saying, this doesn't add anything new, but it actually does. It has to start somewhere. And if this is where it starts, then so be it. I'm just saying it can actually grow and evolve. Now, let me get back to where I was going with this. So this is a Z9, right? 8K60, 12-bit raw video inside of it. Now in this, I have these Angelbird cards, one of which is four terabytes. Now that's cool, four terabytes at that full res video, 
right? Gets me an hour and a half of video time, just an hour and a half if I want to use the full capability of this camera. And it's only going to get crazier from here. Like when we get to 8K 120 frames, 240 frames, it's only going to go up from here, right? The more and more we are pushing frame rates, the more and more resolution, it's just going to keep going up and up and up. But right now we have 8K 12-bit raw 60 frames in hand, right? Now let's say later on the Mark II has one of these uh, in it. So instead of me using a memory card that if you look right here is $1,800 right now for a four terabyte to get me an hour and a half of video. That's like three talking head recording sessions and that memory card's filled while I'm in the field. So if I'm carrying like two or three of these cards, it gets pretty price pricey really quickly, like around six grand to have like three of these cards, right? Well, these SSDs over here for four terabytes is $600. $600 as opposed to $2,000 a card. That's a big difference. And again, it'll only get cheaper on both fronts, obviously. But for the right now is what I'm talking about is where it's a more efficient way of doing things, but it's also another option. That's all it is. No one's saying it's changing anything completely or that you have to adopt it yourself, but it is an option out there. And that's what's really important to all of us. And where I think it's really gonna be important is things like, I don't know, let's say this Sony Alpha 1 that is also 8K video. Well, this thing doesn't have Safe Express Type B slots. It has Safe Express Type A slots. And right now, the largest you can buy is a 160, 160 gig gigs, which is a fraction of the four terabytes, is $400. Meanwhile, for the same money, you can get, mm, I don't know, two terabytes? Actually less, for $100 less, you can get two terabytes. And what I'm saying here is, what's to say that a future A1 Mark II or Mark III, who knows, has an optional battery grip that then has a Pro Blade slot in it. Then you can record your video to the SSD and you can keep your other memory Low, smaller form factor if you want it for something like stills and things like that for maybe photojournalists or something like that. But I'm just saying that if you were to add a grip to this that could then take this slot, it becomes standardized. Then it comes from that card slot or that Pro Blade slot rather. See, I'm already getting mixed up and goes right into a slot that's built into your desktop computer and your editing. That's standardizing. That's thinking going forward. And there was a lot of misconceptions, I think, about when this was first introduced. But the fact that you have memory that can be $180 for a terabyte, two terabytes for $300, four terabytes for $600, or you can get empty blades for $70 right now, but you can put in whatever SSD you want in there because the pins are not proprietary. Right now, I believe what is inside this mag is the SN750 or a version of it. So you're getting like 2000 megabytes per second up to 3000 megabytes per second. Uh, and it can go you know higher than that once they uh, introduce newer and more advanced uh, NVMe me drives as we go forward, just like everything progresses. And then this version of the drive gets cheaper. I'm just saying like, I'm not trying to sell you on this idea, but when I saw all of the negative comments about this system, I was like, are you crazy? They're taking a chance starting possibly a new standard here. And then we have to see if it gets adopted. Of course, early adopters of any type of system take the hit on what compatibility there is out there. But what I'm saying is, who's to say that the computer manufacturers or other things don't look at this and go, that's not a bad idea. Think about it for gamers, right? If you're an eSports pro, you can keep your entire library on these mags or even your operating system, go to a place that has PCs that have open slots, you slam in this pro blade and you're in your operating, you're, you're in your computer just somewhere else while you're traveling. Or let's just say there's not a new PlayStation 5 that comes out where I don't have to open it up with a screwdriver and snap in an NVMe drive. It's just a mag similar to the Xbox Series X, except maybe at an easier price point because it's not proprietary, unlike the Xbox Series X memory. You see what I'm saying here? Like, it's not proprietary. It can be a standard. It can be universal. And because of that, I see a lot of potential here. Will it get there? I don't know. Only time will tell and we'll see what happens. Right now, it's not even released. They're not even giving us a definite date on this. It looks like it's going to be sometime later in the year, um, you know, 2022. And we'll see what happens from there. But I just think that they didn't really put it into a corner. They didn't make 
make it its own thing. It's not its own memory system. I mean, right now, everybody is looking to be using CF Express Type B. Canon, Nikon, Lumix, some RED cameras, I think, use it. Uh, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Fuji jumping on that uh, soon enough with what they probably have coming for their newer series or even their GFX series, right? The only one doing CF Express Type A at this point is Sony, and that's almost making a proprietary memory for that camera system, which if you're in that system, it's probably fine, but it does mean that the price points stay a certain place, that the capacities and options stay a certain place. This doesn't seem like that. That's my only thing. So this was a little bit of a rant. I apologize for that, but it's pretty much uh, a response to the comments on that video. If you guys do want to check out that video, I'll put a link down below, uh, but just open your mind a little bit and look at what this could be. And if all the memory manufacturers jump into making NVMe drives modular, basically taking what's already built into your computers, your laptops, your desktops, and everything else, and making it modular. So that we're not worrying about what port is on what, how many external hard drives do you guys have that don't match, have USB-A from a few years ago and USB-C now, and some are powered, some aren't, you know, all these different things, this kind of eliminates that. And let's say, Let's just say the uh, USB interface changes to USB type D, E, or F later on, right? Well, this enclosure right here that you slide it into so that you can read it, well, you just change out that and you keep your memory. All the memory stays the same because it's modular. You pull it out, you keep your data, you keep your mag, and then you just swap out the enclosure if you need to update it years from now. So you, again, they're just thinking of ways to make it a better, more efficient, easier, smaller footprint workflow for all of us. So I'm just saying, I think it's a really cool idea. I just don't know if it's gonna take off. Let me know down below after hearing all that, do you think that this could have legs, right? I think we're in a weird position now that we're kind of wondering what is going to be the next. So in my opinion, I just think that modular SSD makes a lot of sense. Is this the system that is the next evolution? I don't know. Do I hope so? Kinda. I really hope that we start seeing modular SSDs. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Speaking of newer memory, we have a known company jumping into the C-Express Type B card, and that is gonna be Sabrent. I, I never know if I say their name right, Sabrent, Sabrent, I'm not sure. But they are gonna be making uh, two cards for C-Express Type B, 512 gig and the one terabyte. It seems that their sustained speeds are looking around 1600 megabytes per second, which I'm guessing is on the 512, because usually the higher the capacity, the slower the uh, sustained speed, which they're saying is also 400 megabytes per second, which I'm guessing is the one terabyte. It's a little unclear at this point. If you're wondering, sustain speed is the one speed you really care about. Max speed is nice to hear and all, but if it can't maintain a speed, it never really is about that max speed. So you really wanna look at your minimum speeds and that'll always tell you how fast those cards really are, which matter for things like video and you know burst shooting. So if you're doing 20, 30 frames per second of 50 megapixel file, raw files, you kinda of wanna have uh, you know the fast faster sustain speeds so that it clears your buffer faster. Uh, but overall, it's just kind of cool to see yet another company jumping into CF Express Type B. More options means more competition, which means better for us, right? Better pricing, different options, capacity and speed wise, and all sorts of other things. It's always good to see more and more out there in a space. And CF Express Type B seems to be the memory format that 90% of this industry is moving towards. I mean, the Z9 has two of these slots, no more mixed slots. Uh, we're seeing all the Canon cameras take CF Express Type B going forward now uh, and more and more and more. Uh, Lumix has been on it for a while I, and again, I have some cinema cameras. So if you are like me and are still looking around for Superstars Type B cards, uh, this is another option for you. Instagram is looking to integrate NFTs onto their platform. I know, I know, breathe, let's talk about this rationally. I know what's going on out there, but Instagram is just testing it out right now with a few creators in the NFT space. It is a community out there. There's a definite woven community out there. In fact, if you're wondering what NFTs are, even though there's a lot of information out there and a lot of panels and discussion, and you know you keep hearing about it every day, this sold for so many millions of dollars or whatever. If you wanna take a look, Adorama actually has a bunch of videos out where Lindsay Adler walks you through what the process of uh, you know minting an NFT and putting it out there and what it takes. And we also have the Crypto Art Revolution documentary, which is some of the beginnings of NFT, the creators that started this whole revolution or whatever you want to call it, they actually have a voice here on this channel and you can check out their side of things if you're curious to hear uh, that end of it. However, I will say whether you love or hate NFTs or whatever your thoughts are about them as creators, 
derivatives, we can't ignore them. We have to at least know about them. I'm not saying adopt them or not or whatever. I'm saying it's important that we at least have the information out there for us to ingest and come up with our own decisions on it. So I think it's really great that Adorama has resources for you to do so. Now, jumping back to Instagram and NFTs, it's a platform for sharing content. Well, what about these NFTs, which people claim to own, right? So if you go over to Petapixel's article, they actually let you know what it looks like uh, when it comes to uh, putting an NFT on Instagram. And basically what happens here is it connects your digital wallet, number one. Uh, two, it's your ability to share the NFTs you own, which I think is part of you know buying them and collecting them as you're wanting to have the and to be clear nft is only referring to the agreement of the ownership uh, rather than the actual piece itself so it's a little weird in that regard again check out the resources we have uh, i'll put the links down below obviously and then the third thing is is that there's automatic tagging of the content from the creator once it's shared so the collector and the content creator are both part of the tagging that happens from wherever this piece is found on that platform, which I actually think is kind of cool. They're just trying this out with some creators. It's not fully out there, if out there at all. They're not sure about it still, apparently. And uh, uh, Facebook has made a statement here. It says, Meta says that it understands NFTs are known to have major environmental repercussions, and the company plans to help reduce emissions by purchasing renewable energy. Uh, and you can go to their website, and you can see the explanation they have on that uh, over there. I don't know what that actually means. I don't know if that actually replaces all the other places that people are mining for crypto and whatever else it takes to do all this type of stuff. It, it, it's no, uh, no one's hiding the fact that it, it, it's an, it has an impact on the environment, but it, I think Meta is just trying to kind of soften the blow on making this announcement a little bit, but I don't know. You can check out their website and make up your own decisions on that. Uh, for me personally, I don't know. I'm not in the NFT space. I don't own any. I haven't created any, So I, but I am listening to what's going on up there because it's important to know what's going on. I and mean, you can't deny the fact that we are are creating more and more digital mediums of things, and there's still murky ideas of what ownership of that is. So I do understand the NFT component of owning a digital uh, media of some kind. Like you know, uh, you know, if you don't print and you're constantly putting your images out there, what is the ownership? A lot of people say that copyright in Web two, if you want to call it, right now the copyright is enough to cover us, but NFT seems to be um, pushed towards the next step of being able to actually put a value to it. So. I don't know. I don't know. Again, I know this is like a hot button topic. I'm I'm sure the comments are lighting up right now as I'm as I'm talking. Uh, let me know down below, but please keep it civil, okay? Whether you're for or against NFTs, don't talk down to anybody in those comments and let's talk rationally because that's how we actually sort and ne uh, negotiate things like this in our world is through actual conversation and dialogue, not trolling each other. So let's have a discussion on those comments and feel free to reply to each other. Okay, so a uh, bunch of stuff happened this uh, uh, while I was gone on the channel and one of them is Gavin Hoey went live from a rain room. If you haven't checked it out, my man uh, rented out a rain room and and went a little crazy. Of course, he threw fog in there, I'm trying to get to some of the dynamic parts for you. Uh, and he did some really cool stuff, and he talks to you all about what it is to either freeze the rain or get some motion from the rain, how you handle your equipment while in the rain. So if you are ever curious about shooting in such, such an environment or creating sort of a, this type of imagery, check out this live stream on Adorama. He goes live once a month, and this week, Thursday, 5 p.m., Dan Norton is back doing cinematic portraits, how to add dimension to your to your work with cinematic lighting. Uh, I'm a sucker for cinematic lighting. If you guys know anything that I shoot, uh, you can check out my Instagram if you want. Uh, but this should be a really good one, so check that out this Thursday. And if you didn't know, Daniel has a really, really awesome podcast. It's called A Voice, and it's not what you think. It's not where he's talking about, you know, camera versus camera or lighting or whatever. He's actually talking about as the philosophy as a creator. If you are ever questioning yourself, what you're doing, how you're doing it, if you ever think 
thinking, how can I stay inspired? Where can I look for something to keep me ambitious? Daniel's got you covered. I'm not kidding you. It is a call-in show. So you guys are welcome to call in, leave Daniel a voicemail, and he will actually answer you on the podcast. So check out that link. Listen to my man. I think he's had some really interesting insight on a lot of stuff. He's definitely got a Yoda thing going on. I'll say that. And, you know, Dan's been a really good friend of mine and nothing short of an older brother to me in this industry. So I really respect the things he has to say and his insight. So I hope you guys get a chance to check that out. One of the things he actually said that I, just to give you like a little taste is he remembers a time when we used to go and talk to the photographers and say, hey, what do you shoot? And he used to, our answers always used to be the genre. I shoot portraits. I shoot, uh, you know, editorial. I shoot, uh, I'm a photojournalist. I do fine art or whatever. And he was like, nowadays when you ask what do you shoot, people just talk about the camera brand that they're got in their bag or whatever. And, uh, and I got to agree with him. It's like that. And he closed one of his shows out by saying, next time someone asks you what you shoot, uh, I hope you answer by what it is you shoot rather than what you shoot with. And I think that's a really cool little taste of the methodology that's going on on that podcast. And I'm just letting you guys know about the Adderall XP channel. I know, I know it, you think it's just about gaming, but it kind of isn't. There's a lot of resources on here. We just put out a video on five ways to use your stream deck that isn't streaming, including editing uh, video and audio, uh, deep dives into which console you should get if you're not sure or trying to buy one for someone. Uh, we have a new show that's going on. It's, it's getting dialed back a little bit, but if you want to stay up on some of the gaming news, it is there, but really, some of the stuff is really great, like comparing the graphics cards that are out there. What do they all mean? What's a 3050, 3070, 3080? What's a TI? What are any of these things, right? Well, Josh Soleil breaks it down for you and a lot of other stuff, so it's not just for hardcore gamers. It's just a really great channel so far. It is in its infancy still, so get in on that ground floor and also join the Discord. There is a lot of people in there having a lot of great discussions, whether you're a camera nerd, into music, video, whatever, gaming, it doesn't matter. Anything that Adorama is about, which is creating, is in that Discord, and it's a very supportive community. I'm in there myself. Share your work, ask your questions, answer somebody else's questions, and let's keep this community tight, woven, and growing, okay, guys? Shout of the week, I'm gonna throw it over to my buddy who actually helped me out on the Halloween workshop, and he's a really great photographer, and he did a photo walk recently for Adorama, and I hope we do more and more stuff with him. Oh, take it over to Will Kadena, who is killing out there and he's so full of energy he's such a good guy and you can't help but learn something from him and he always finds really cool niches to shoot and teach so go check him out he's got a lot of great content up there and he definitely shares a lot of insights that he's gained over the years so do yourself a favor and just go hit up will kadena over there on uh, instagram give him a follow say what's up tell him seth said what's up i'm sure he'll uh, respond back with like a what He's so full of energy. It's all I hear. Every time I, I think about him in my head, I always think we're going like, yo, man. Like, I always, I always think like this high energy. So go check him out. Give him a follow. Question of the week. Well, I think I'm just going to pull it back to you guys. After everything that's been going on, all the changes, some of you have dabbled, some of you have stayed, some of you have left. Let me know down below in the comments where you stand on NFTs as a creative. Do you look at them as a positive? Do you see artists getting paid who normally wouldn't be getting paid? Do you see them as something that you don't kind of trust, something that you think is the future? Again, let's keep it civil, but let me know down in the comments where you stand on NFTs as far as are you a collector, are you a creator, um, and are you someone that's even interested in it, or if you're not, why okay again keep it civil let's just see what's going on out there but for now you can follow me at last x witness on all socials a bunch of new videos on my own personal youtube channel you guys are welcome to follow me there um and it's all the same name as always all right guys i i am out of breath oh man i feel like i did a lot of spieling on this one so i apologize if it came off a little ranty but let me know in the comments what you think about any of this stuff hopefully i'll see you guys on thursday for daniel's live stream don't forget to hit like share her down hit subscribe plus the bell so you get notified when i report more videos out like this and i'll see you guys next time later